What's going on everyone, it's Chef, and welcome to an Elden Ring leveling guide. This guide is pretty focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's hitting level 120. Why level 120? Well, even though the meta is usually 125 or higher, I have seen some people trying out 120, so I thought that would be a good place to stop to allow for flexibility. You can't level down, but you can always level up. I had a problem, and that problem was I wanted several builds to play around with, but considering how long my first playthrough took, Replaying the game several times just for PvP builds sounded like it was going to be super tedious. And well, it's honestly still tedious, but I did come up with a method that works for me, and allows you to get a character all the way up to rune level 120 in less than 2 hours. I'll make it clear right now that this is absolutely not intended to be used by anyone going through their first playthrough. This is meant to be used for creating additional usable PvP builds. Of course, duping does exist, and I don't have anything against it, but there's a number of reasons why someone might not want to, or be able to do that, so if you're one of those people, then this video is for you. I've heard from plenty of people that they're stuck PvPing at a rune level of 200 plus, just because that's where they happen to finish their first playthrough, but in reality, you're not so stuck at all. Before the guide begins, I'll just clarify a few more things. This guide does not include many essential things to creating builds. Obviously, if you're planning on invading, you'll need to go around collecting flask upgrades. If you want to be using a variety of weapons, you'll certainly need to collect all the bell bearings, etc. That stuff will end up taking much longer than 2 hours of course, but when you're already level 120, it makes the other stuff go pretty smooth. Okay, last thing, I promise, but I need to make clear that this is by no means the very fastest or most efficient way to do this. I'm no speedrunner, this guide is meant to be super accessible, and a lot of the steps we'll be taking along the way are in the interest of making things easy, not just fast. We'll start at the first step of course, where we'll begin Vare's questline by exhausting his dialogue. Through Vare, we'll eventually reach the best farming spot in the game, that's actually our end game here. To reach that goal, what we're going to be doing in the next several steps is preparing to accomplish one thing, and that's to kill Godric. If you're super familiar with early game and don't need any guidance on how to gear up and finish off Godric, feel free to make your way to his arena and defeat him however you like, and skip to the according timestamp. If you want to follow the route I do, stay tuned. After making your way from the Church of Elagrace to the Gatefront Ruins and picking up the map fragment along with Torrent, Make your way east of Agua Lake towards this location on the map to pick up a gold pickled fowl foot. After that, continue south towards the Weeping Peninsula, ride past Irina until you see a broken down caravan. This contains the Morning Star, which we'll later use to kill Grail to jumpstart our leveling. The Weeping Peninsula contains three very easily obtainable sacred tiers, so before moving into Kaelid, those will be the goal. Further south past the Morning Star, you'll find a site of Grace with a merchant by it, and beyond that is the map fragment. Collect the map fragment and head back to that side of Grace, being the Castle Morn Rampart. Before setting off, it's helpful to place a beacon at each of the sacred tier locations. Once you've done that, proceed west of the Grace to begin collecting the tiers. We're doing this because after killing Grail, you'll be able to level up your vigor to about 40, and without some sacred tiers to boost your flasks, the heals are a super small fraction of your HP pool. After you've collected the tiers and buffed your flasks at the side of Grace, fast travel back to Northern Limgrave and proceed towards the Third Church of America, Martyr where you'll find the Flask of Wondrous Physic and an additional sacred tier. You can pick up the map fragment for East Limgrave if you're having trouble finding the church, but otherwise it's fine to skip. Remember to actually put the healing tier in your Physic Flask, and then it's on to Kaelid. North of the Third Church of America are two Spirit Springs, take them both, navigate your way up the hill, and continue east past the border into Kaelid. There are a few sites of grace along the way that I touched for the future, but all we're looking to do in Kaelid is to first pick up the map, and then locate Fort Faroth, which is where Grail the Dragon is found. All of the dragons can be avoided easily by running along the left side of Grail. Just rest at the grace to reset any aggro once you reach Fort Faroth, and position yourself under his wing with the Morning Star equipped and two-handed. The next couple of minutes, all you have to do is swing that Morning Star over and over, wait for those bleed procs to diminish his health bar, and once he looks like he's within range of dying to a bleed, use that gold pickled foul foot we picked up earlier, and finish off the dragon promptly to gain a crazy amount of runes, just like that. At this point, we can travel back to the Gatefront Ruins, where you can level your character however you like. I highly recommend just dumping your points into Vigor. If you want Margit and Godric to feel easy, then making pitiful dents in your health bar with each hit is the way to go about it. Go north through the gate once you've leveled up, ride past all the enemies, and pick up a convenient golden seed along the way. We're almost ready to take on Margit and move into Stormvale, 
but first we'll take advantage of some trolls to the east to pick up some smithing stones. Ride towards the location as I've shown on the map, and position the glowing statue between yourself and the troll to allow him to break it. Collect the stones, and at that point you can double back towards the Golden Seed and continue along the path towards the Castle Ward Tunnel side of Grace just before Margaret the Fell Omen. Before entering the fight, travel back to the Church of Ella to use the smithing table and upgrade the Morning Star to plus two. With that, we're now ready to take on Margaret. Travel back to the Castle Ward Tunnel, summon Roger to assist you, and Margaret should be very easy at this level. Once he's been defeated, proceed into Stormvale Castle by using the main gate to make your way towards Godric. On your way, you can find a Frog Calling Finger and a Golden Seed just before the boss room. At this point, you can use the Frog Calling Finger if you want to try to summon a player to assist you. If not, just go right through the fog. With this amount of HP and flasks at this level, it should make for a very forgiving fight, but if it takes a few tries, that's no big deal, of course. After defeating Godric, just make sure you light the grace, and then travel back to the first step to speak with Vare. He'll tell you to visit the round table hold and speak to the two fingers. After exhausting the dialogue of the finger reader, before you leave, pay a visit to the twin maiden husks, and purchase a longbow. Then return to the first step to discover Vare has left you a message letting you know of his whereabouts. From there, travel back to Godric's arena, where you'll be able to enter Lyernia of the Lakes to the north. Now that Godric is dead and you've spoken to the finger reader, Vare has moved to Rose Church, which is where the rest of his quest line will begin from. Proceed northeast from the lake facing cliff side of Grace at the very beginning of Lyernia, and make your way towards the first map fragment. From there, simply continue into the lake towards the second map fragment and the Academy Gate town side of Grace. After touching the Grace, Rose Church will be directly west, and will pick up one side of Grace along the way, called Fallen Ruins of the Lakes. Move on to the west to Rose Church, where you'll encounter Vare once more. Speak to him, and he will give you three festering bloody fingers. To move on in his quest line, you'll have to consume three of the fingers by invading three times, each of which you can immediately use the finger severer to return to your world, and will still count as an invasion. If you don't get instant invasions in Lyurnia, try moving to Limgrave to use the festering fingers, and then simply travel back to the fallen ruins of the lakes to then return to Vare. Once you've invaded three times, speak to Vare to receive the Lord of Blood's favor, he'll ask you to soak it in Maiden's blood. What I like to do on this run is to use the Maiden in the Chapel of Anticipation. To get there, fast travel back to the Academy Gate town side of Grace, and make your way towards a way gate as shown here on the map. This way gate will bring you straight to the next map fragment, so be sure to pick that up. The northern Lyurnia Lakeshore side of Grace is just south of the map fragment, and from there, we'll continue all the way south to the Four Belfries. Hug the path to the left once you reach the cliff side, and go all the way to the top of the hill to reach the Four Belfries side of Grace. Open a chest at the northernmost belfry to obtain an imbued sword key, which can then be used at the easternmost belfry to unlock the way gate that leads to the Chapel of Anticipation. Here you'll find the grafted scion of course, so take your sweet revenge and move on towards the church at the far end, where you'll find a dead maiden against the wall on the left, soak the Lord of Blood's favor, and then return to the fallen ruins of the lake side of Grace to make your way back to Vare at Rose Church. At this point his quest line is nearly finished, just let him have his way with your finger and speak to him again after to receive the Pure Blood Knight's medal. Use that thing right in front of Vare's face despite him telling you to wait, and you'll be transported to Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum. Just up the stairs from your spawn point is the Dynasty Mausoleum entrance site of Grace. After touching it, we'll be making our way to the final destination of the run. This path can be kind of confusing to explain verbally, so I'll just let it fully play out for you to follow. After riding past all the Albanarics, we've reached the final site of Grace. This is a super well-known farming spot, and it's great because no matter how low level you are, if you've got arrows and a longbow, the spot is highly effective. Arrows can be purchased very cheap from Kale at the Church of Ella, buy a few hundred so you won't have to go back at any point. This is your home for the rest of the way until 120. Not much to say as far as farming technique, I just recommend watching a few loops of it from me, and then it's basically up to you just to practice it and get a feeling for it. You can get this down to about 9 seconds per cycle if you're efficient, 
which makes for a very effective rune farm. At this point, you can consider going to pick up the Gold Scarab Talisman to boost your rune acquisition, but honestly, when I tested how much time it saves and did the math, even if you're fully efficient and kill the necessary boss in Kaelid first try, it only saves a couple of minutes, at least for reaching level 120, and you'll actually end up losing time if it takes you multiple attempts. If you're planning on going a bit higher level, maybe closer to 130 or 140, it does become much more beneficial. A small warning about the farming is that you can actually sit down at the side of grace too quickly and you'll simply respawn the bird before you actually get any runes. I found that keeping an eye on the bird until you see the wings fully open as it falls, and then walking back to the grace made for consistent and fast timing. I first got to the farming spot at just over an hour, and that's with messing around with recording the whole time, so I think if I tried for a run where I was fully focused on the game itself, and not the video, I could have been quite a bit faster. That means that the farming took me about 50 minutes, I wasn't really being that efficient with it, so if you get a rhythm going, I think this run could be very easily done in less than 90 minutes. Of course, there are plenty of other ways to reach the farming spot much faster, but I wanted the guide to be easily accessible to newer players wanting to get into PvP that may not be all that comfortable taking down Godric at a very low level. Best of luck to anyone that wants to try out the run, and I'll see you next time.